Hey guys, how's it going? My name's Justin Melson with Happy Fox Productions, and today we're going to be doing a quick tutorial on how to do a CGI scar on top of your actor. And it doesn't necessarily have to be on their face, but in this example, we're going to be doing a CGI scar on this actor's face. So what we have here is a shot in my, the teaser to Angora Road. But what we have here is besides the additional atmospheric effects we have going on, we have a scar that is right here on his face. And the thing is, is the original shot looked a bit like this. We shot this on the Red Scarlet Dragon in 5K, and we didn't have the budget to hire a special effects makeup artist, nor did anybody on set really know how to do special effects makeup. And so I just said, okay, I'll just do it in post-production. Hopefully it'll work out. And so the way we went about doing this is, well, it's actually a fairly simple technique. It's just mainly compositing the scar to look like it's on the actor's face. The actual scar effect itself isn't really hard at all. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So, so we have this raw clip here shot on the red Scarlet Dragon. He just looks up. And so what we're going to go ahead and do is just do a really quick temp grade. So I'll do Control Alt Y to do an adjustment layer, throw on some Lumetri color and we'll just add on some saturation. Add a lot of contrast, it's a war movie. Bring the temperature up. This is just a very, very quick rough grade just so we have a base to work off, work off of. Down the blacks, go into the curves, probably go into the mid-tones, bring that in, and take anything that's pink or purple and just kind of take those colors out because we don't want those. Especially um, a lot of the scar the makeup artist that we did have on set, she really went heavy on the pinks and the skin tone, so I'll probably take those out. Just take a lot of these colors, kind of bring them down. Cool, and then I'm probably gonna just do, <laughs> undo what I just did and desaturate most of it. Cool, go down here into the color wheel, bring the midtones down, bring the highlights down just so the overall scene is a bit gloomy. I mean, in the actual grade, I kind of did some brightening and relighting on his chin just because I wanted it to match the other shot where he's kind of looking up at the other soldier. That's kind of more of like an angelic type shot. But anyways, maybe bring the midtones, the warmth up. And this isn't a color grading tutorial, so I'm trying to make this pretty quick. So cool, cool. Shadows down. And maybe bring this, bring this down again some more. Bring the shadows in. Cool, so the last thing I'm gonna do, is, well, second to the last thing I'm gonna do is name this. I'll do overall grade, something like that. And then we'll go ahead and add another adjustment layer. And this is just something I like to do when something is close up to the foreground. We didn't have any diffusion on set for this part. So I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of desaturate and lower the luminance values of this part. Because if it's closer to the camera, I feel like it'd be a bit more cinematic and add a bit more depth if we were able to kind of dim this part. So hit G, kind of do a quick roto. It's actually not even a roto. <laughs> so just kind of mask and isolate this, hit V. And we'll just do curves, because you can't go wrong with curves. And we'll do tint. Boom. Probably tint this to like 40, kind of bring that in just a little bit and feather that out. And looks probably right there. Cool, awesome. I mean, in the actual grade, like I mentioned, there's a whole lot of other work that was done on the shot, but for now, this is definitely good enough. So now let's look on the, let's work on the actual scar that we have going on. So. Normally what I would do is like, okay, I maybe need to go into Bouju and do a 3D motion track because his face is kind of doing a 3D track. But the thing is, this shot is in slow motion and it's like, he's like, God, God help me. And, you know, we could probably do a 2D track for this. So I'll probably go in. And so what I have here is a JPEG image of a scarred hand. And this is something you could literally find on Google which is, <laughs> this is where I found it. So you can literally go on Google and probably find this exact image. So I'm just gonna go ahead and drop this into our composition. Cool. And I'm just gonna go ahead and line this up and I'm gonna also turn adaptive resolution off. So we're gonna go ahead and line this up. So I'm going to hit G. And I'll probably start right about here. And I'm just gonna kind of get this section of the hand. Cool. 
and I'm going to hit W, rotate that, and I just kind of want to line it up with where I would like for it to be, which is going to be about in this area. Maybe even scale it down just a little bit. So hit S, scale that in. Hit T to bring our opacity. Just kind of look at what we're dealing with. So this looks like the area that I'd probably want it to be. So now I'm going to go ahead and hit F and feather this guy. Not too much, but just right about there. Now, like I said, the actual scar effect itself really isn't too hard. It's just the compositing part that you just have to make sure you really get down. So we'll just bring this in, bring that in. And so this is just a little cheat. I usually master in 1080. If this was, you know, you're creating a DCP or this is going on, you know, you're going to do a 4K master, then obviously you'd want to really go into detail. But this is 5K being down sample or down res to 1080p. So that's why it's so pixelated as we can kind of get away with our sloppy composite. So just bring that in, bring that in and bring, bring this guy in. Cool. So that's what we have. Looks really good. In fact, that's the whole tutorial right there. All right, bye guys. Just kidding. So we're going to go on ahead and add a Lumetri effect onto this guy. So we we'll do Lumetri color. And in case if you guys didn't know in the new version of After Effects, you can now go into Windows and have Lumetri scopes, which we don't need at the moment. But in case you guys are curious, Adobe went on ahead and put that in there. And that's super nice of them. So we'll probably go into the blacks, kind of accentuate to the reds, go to the shadows, bring that in exposure down right right around there looks kind of cool but it's still not completely there yet so let's see color wheels bring that in bring that in I might even bring this guy right here the opacity is at 57 so we'll probably bring this back up and it's getting there Slowly but surely, maybe bring the whole key right now is just to composite it so it looks like it is part of his skin tone. And so a part of compositing, we'd probably want to add what I'd normally add is a camera lens blur and probably do like a 0.5% blur and add anamorphic to it. But we're just going to do a fast blur for now, which is <laughs> becoming obsolete. In terms of Adobe, everybody likes to use Gaussian blur or something. I still like fast blur. So do like 0.3, just kind of blurs it just a little bit, maybe point, maybe point two, just because we gotta be we gotta be precise with these numbers, guys. So actually, no. I'm sorry guys. Point one, point one, final answer. Cool. Okay, so looking at this from a wide shot perspective, I see just a little bit too much red coming from this little scar area. So I might even bring the blue in just a little bit. Right about there, it looks pretty cool. And then of course, you'd probably want to touch over this in the final grade as well. All right, cool. So next thing that I probably want to do is add some match noise or grain. So go into noise and grain and we'll go ahead and do match grain onto this effect. And what we're just going to do is we're going to go final output in the source layer. It is going to be this R3D. So, I mean, you can't really tell too much, but it's essentially just adding a little bit of grain that is matching from this red file, which always just kind of, doesn't hurt and of course we could bring it up not that we'd really need to but yeah you can if you look really closely I don't know if YouTube compression is kind of killing it but you can see it just a bit and that looks about good that looks pretty good again remember it's all about just getting it to look composited in there because the last thing you want is for someone to say oh wow emotional scene but terrible CGI so that looks pretty good. So the last thing that we have to do is do a camera track. So I'll go ahead and add a null object, right click, new, null object. And we'll call this tracker. And so we're just going to go ahead and click right here. Make sure you're at the beginning of your timeline or wherever you did your main composite. Go to tracker. I was about to say go to window tracker, go to tracker. 
and we're gonna do track motion we're gonna do position and rotation I think that's what I did before so let's let's experiment so we'll do bring this guy that's a good point right there kind of bring that there and we'll do track point one on this little like sesame seed that's on his face so we're gonna go in ahead and analyze forward And this is the fun part where we just get to chill and let the computer do the hard work. Could you guys imagine what it would be like if there was no such thing as match moving or camera tracking or motion tracking at all? Just imagine just imagine how much more expensive movies would be in general with the visual effects. Like, yeah, we can't 3D track, so we got to we got to have a guy stay overnight and just kind of do it by hand. It's like, "Oh my gosh." Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it there. Let's just look over the track. It looks really good. Let's just double check. Yep, looks about as accurate as it's gonna get. So we'll go ahead and hit edit target, tracker, okay. And we're gonna do X, Y, yep. So hit apply, X and Y, sounds good. Perfect, so now we're, what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna pick whip these composited elements, which is just this guy. We're gonna pick whip that to this tracker information and we're gonna add motion blur just cuz cuz why not I mean the shot is so slow but 180 looks good so uh, what am I doing yeah see I just I'm not even following my own advice so I'm gonna go ahead and undo that and I'm gonna move to the beginning there we go now I'm gonna pick whip it over so we're gonna do that to that and then we're gonna do motion blur and then we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go to composition. Well, yeah, we already got that. So now if we hit play, let's see what we got. And it's looking pretty good. It is completely stuck onto his face besides the end part because we stopped, but it looks really composited on there. I feel like your average person wouldn't be able to tell that is a CG scar. And of course you could always go in there and if the reds are a little too much, you can of course always go in and just kind of take out some of the reds, which you know I might as well just do now. So let me go into these reds here, kind of bring that in. But then again, the reds do give it that bloody look. So we don't want to go overboard, probably like right there. I didn't really do anything now that I look at it, but, and then of course you could always go in and just add overall grain. I like to use Gorilla Film Grain and just kind of throw that on top of it. Maybe set that to multiply, turn the opacity down, then you'll have yourself a final shot. And that my friends is how you composite a little scar onto your actor's face. And of course we had the benefit of already having a grungied up face. If he was a very clean actor with makeup done and everything, then it, it definitely be way harder because you're trying to composite somebody else's scar from a Google picture onto a very clean actor. But luckily for us, it is a war film and we could grungy up this image even more and, you know, even grungy up other parts of his face, just do a lot of color correction to just really grungy everything up, which only adds, makes the compositing a lot easier when it comes to the scar. And of course, you could definitely add scars to different parts of his face. Anyways, that is this tutorial. I hope this tutorial taught you guys something on compositing or maybe it just kind of helped go into different techniques on how you can composite something like this. Or maybe you could save money on set by doing it in post. Who knows? But anyways, my name is Justin Nelson with Happy Fox Productions. If you want to keep up with more of what we're doing, definitely feel free to follow me on social media. We're constantly doing camera techniques and different tutorials and things every day. So definitely check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.